A bot is a software application that runs autonomously, which basically means on its own. Um, and bots come in a lot of different shapes and forms and can serve a incredibly wide amount of function. And the way you've probably encountered a bot is online, on social media. Think about Twitter replies. When you just have somebody come in and start spamming your replies or something like that and you think, oh, that's a bot. Like, that's not a person just because of either the language they're using or the speed at which they're posting or the, you know, scam which they're scamming. So a bot can serve almost any purpose you want it to. It can amplify content online. It can perform financial transactions. It can scour the internet for when a new sneaker drops and buy all of them. And so people can spin up bots pretty easily. You know, you don't even have to be a expert coder or something like that to ensure that it performs functionally. You can almost, you know, buy it out of the box. And so that means that people can spin up hundreds of these things and have them performing any number of tests all across the internet. It depends. Bots aren't good or bad, just like technology isn't inherently good or bad. People take it and use it for different things. Bots can be used for good things. You know, there are certain bots where you do an input, you, you know, put a certain number of words in and it spits out something funny. There are also issues around misinformation and the amplification of misinformation, particularly around things like elections or COVID or any number of other things where you see certain information being pushed by accounts that might have, you know, five followers or zero followers, or you check the next day and it's been suspended. And so I think that's where it gets into really problematic angles. In my reporting, I've been talking to researchers and academics and others who are creating meters around trying to measure the likelihood that something is a bot. It's really hard to tell whether it's a bot or a person because of how complex it is and you know the varieties of which it can engage and mimic human behavior. And again, there are like guardrails on that and it's coded to perform specific functions. But if you're really good at it, you can make a really appealing bot that almost can pass as human and it's really hard to tell whether it's a human or a bot online. We conceive of bots as a construct when in reality it's becoming much harder to tell what is a person and what is a bot if you're just encountering one in the wild.